All right, welcome back. And I think we need to have a little bit of a catch up because there are so many new faces here. Well, mostly following on from the last video where we set off on an adventure to rescue one of the Dunkirk little ships, Southern Queen. So to all of those new faces, welcome. There's also those of you that have been here a while and you're probably wondering to yourselves when we're setting sail again and getting back to exploring the very best of British anchorages where we obviously share those adventures with you here on YouTube as well as adding them to our great British anchorages page on our website. Hopefully a resource that others of you out there will find useful as this develops and grows over time. But in short, the answer to your question is soon, very soon, hopefully at the end of next week, if not the week after. We've just got a few finishing touches and little jobs just to finish off before we can finally cast the lines and set sail. However, to those of you who are new here, and even some of you that have been here a while, there are still many unanswered questions. And what I'm going to try and do in this video here is answer all of the ones that seem the most pertinent. But firstly, if you're new here, my name's Dominic. This is Carly. The star of all of us is this little guy, Hank. And this fine British sailing yacht that you can see before you now is Kadoa, our home. Now, during the warmer months, we sail around from Anchorage to Anchorage, enjoying Britain's majestic coastline, as well as her inland waterways, where we document all of our favorite destinations and adventures, which you can check out here on YouTube or on our website, where we catalog all of these for you in our great British anchorages section. And we hope this section becomes more useful over time as it gets bigger and filled full of more information. And for those of you who are looking for some inspiration of some new places yourself to go and check out around the UK, maybe this can be the place to go just to find that little bit of inspiration. Now, as each year goes by, we grow just a little bit more confident in our abilities to navigate Godoa to ever more beautiful destinations all the while trying to live as, as off-grid as we possibly can, relying on the wind, the power of the sun, and a recently acquired passion for hunting and gathering. Now, each winter, as our money runs out and, well, things start to break on a 40-year-old sailboat, we head back to the real world in order to find work and start rebuilding both our sailing fund and, well, all of the systems, as I said, that break on a 40-year-old sailing boat, all ahead of our adventures the following year. Now, as luck would have it, our paths happened to cross with a guy called Andy from Willet Marine in Southampton regarding some issues that we were having with Kadoa. And one thing led to another, and the next thing we know, Carly and I were both taken under the tutelage of master shipwrights at Willet Marine. And not only did we once again manage to find gainful employment for the winter, but we both had a fantastic opportunity to learn from master boat builders who've done everything from building round the world cruising yachts for the likes of Oyster, all the way to the restoration and maintaining of classic and historic boats. The skills we could learn here would surely be invaluable for life on a 40 year old sailing boat. But the long cold winter, however, is coming to an end. And so it's time to turn our attention to bringing Kadoa back out of hibernation, finishing off the many jobs we started and installing the many upgrades that we feel will make life easier when we're living on our anchor in some of the most breathtaking locations this country has to offer. Now, for those of you that did arrive here because of the Southern Queen video, I have some really exciting updates for you. Now, many of you did reach out through the wonderful powers of the interwebs to share your personal stories or stories of friends and family, specifically regarding Southern Queen, which was delightfully overwhelming. And whilst I spent most of the video focusing on Southern Queen's role in the absolutely legendary mission that was Operation Dynamo, the reality is at nearly a hundred years old, Southern Queen has operated in many different capacities over that time. And following the war, uh, one of her most lengthy duties, I believe, was actually as a commercial passenger ferry in possibly one of our favourite destinations in all of the UK, down in the Isles of Scilly. 
Now, since Southern Queen has been back in Southampton, we have actually had uh, multiple people come and look at the boat. And one of them is a surveyor and a structural engineer that actually came up with some incredibly surprising findings. And that is, even though the majority of the softwood planking on Southern Queen is seriously deteriorated, the oak frame the skeleton structure of Southern Queen itself looks to be about 70% intact and perfectly usable, which is an incredibly pleasant surprise because from the outside looking in, it looked like it was gonna be far worse, but actually 70% of the main core of the boat is still intact. This now seems like a much more doable project. Now, this does actually bring me to a slightly contentious subject uh, and I don't know the answer to it, I think it's going to be subjective, but this is where I thought this platform would be a great place to try and come to some sort of agreement or as, as best we can. And that is this. In fact, it's a question that came up. There were a whole bunch of questions that came up and there were a handful that were kind of repeating the same thing over and over. Uh, and this is probably the first one. At what point does the restoration of an old wooden boat become the production of a replica? Now, if 70% of the original oak frame and the skeletal structure of the boat is still intact and you're having to replace 30% of it, is that still the original boat? Now, the softwood planking on the exterior of the boat is in much worse shape. There's about 80% of it that we're probably going to need to change. So to bring that in, if 70% of the original structure of the boat is good, even if we have to replace 80% of the cladding or the planking, should I say, on the outside, what do you think? So let us know what you think on the numbers. Jump in the comments. Let us know replica or restoration. But also give us your numbers as well. Where would we need to move those dials? And maybe the figures that we get the most of, I'll put up in a poll and we can all come to a, a community consensus. And speaking of community, that's going to bring me on to the next point of call with Southern Queen. Now, this is actually another one a lot of you guys discussed in the comments previously, and that is the safeguarding of Southern Queen's future. Like, if we all get together as a community and we all chip in, whether it be with time, with money, with videography, as I'm trying to do my bit to help out, um, resources, whatever it happens to be, how do we know that we're not going to find ourselves here in another five years, ten years' time with Southern Queen on the cusp of falling apart? And that is a very valid and a great question. Now, the guys at Willet Marine have got together with the owner of the boat, and it looks like the boat's going to be going into a trust. We've also been in touch with, I believe, the Historic Little Ships Association, and there's a whole bunch of interested parties that are going to basically be working in a non-profit charity capacity to oversee the future of Southern Queen. And the way that she's going to hopefully make her money is she's going to be a commercial going vessel once more, and she's going to be doing, hopefully, tours. And they could take place in, well, there's four locations that have been shortlisted, and she might actually take time maybe spend a year in each location or split it up throughout a year that's going to be the Solent the River Thames the Isles of Scilly once again and then maybe do some work down in Kent where she'll give historic tours where people can actually come and see and touch and, and get into the boat that saved so many potential ancestors. So that's the hope. So the boat's going to go into a non-profit trust and then the money that she makes from this commercial venture is basically going to go into her upkeep, her mooring and then taking her out of the water every year and having the restoration work continue to take place throughout her lifetime. So hopefully that answers uh, some of the worries that people had there. That's, that's the plan at the moment, but maybe you've got a better idea. Jump in the comments, let us know if you can think of something that you think would be better in terms of safeguarding her future or generating the money from using her or not in order to keep her going again share your thoughts uh the community-led response has actually been quite pivotal in steering how this project happens to be evolving so if you're thinking it you may as well just jump in the comments and share it who knows you might help steer the direction one way or another a couple more fairly common questions came up you know how how is southern queen's restoration being paid for uh, well, the truth be told, uh, it, again, it's, it's community-led. You know, people are jumping in and helping out either financially. We've had some incredibly generous people already who've started to make donations uh, to a, a... It was either a GoFundMe or a Just Giving page. I did pop the link in the description of the last video, but for those of you who haven't seen it, you can actually find it here. So that's been great. People like myself, you know, wherever I can help out in the actual manual labour, you know, I don't mind picking things up and, and, and doing the best I can, uh, or maybe just making these videos uh, to get them out there so other people who may be interested in this project can see it as well. And another question that was asked 
somewhat regularly is will I be documenting this uh, restoration going forward? Uh, well, originally I was just working with the guys at Willet Marine and captivated by the passion and enthusiasm that they had for this particular project. So I went to hang out with them, help out where I could and document it. And spending multiple days in their company and seeing just how much it means to them brought the whole story of the Dunkirk Little Ships and Operation Dynamo to life to me in a way that I had never really thought about it before and it and it's touched something in me too so whilst we are setting sail in a week or two fairly shortly and and we'll be spending months exploring the very best places on our own coastline and 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 doing our best to live in those environments the truth of the matter is we have a fairly huge problem with Kadoa, which is how we ended up with Andy's help from Willet Marine in the first place so we are going to need to come back and tackle that before we head off on our Project 365 challenge. So all of these things are kind of coming together in a way that the stars are aligning, you could say. And so, yes, we are going to be able to come back and bear witness to many months of the work that's going to take place on Southern Cream. And for that reason, yes, I am going to continue to document the restoration project with the Southern Queen and bring it to you guys where I can in between our adventures too. So think of it for those of you who know Grand Designs, it'll be like coming back months later, seeing how everyone has been getting on and then filming what's going on in the moment. But for the rest of you that are wondering when we're setting sail, fear not, we will be heading off shortly. I just wanted to make this quick video to give you guys uh, a little update and bring you up to speed with everything that's going on. There's a lot of moving parts right now, but really exciting things coming in the next couple of weeks. Anyway, I hope you're all keeping safe and well and enjoying the fact that the sun is finally starting to arrive again. And we'll see you all very, very soon. Bye for now.